everyone. Today I am going to be briefly discussing the book Why Switzerland by Jonathan Steinberg. Steinberg, I guess if you want to pronounce it fully correctly. Uh, and Why Switzerland sort of focuses on Switzerland as a country, in particular breaking down uh, their history, their uh, politics, their language, their economy. It, it sort of ties all of these things together in a nicely woven book. And sort of the title, Why Switzerland, is designed to sort of tell the reader, like, why is Switzerland important? Why is it significant? Why is it different than a lot of other nations? And in particular, I think Switzerland stands out from Europe because it has maintained a quasi-multicultural sort of identity. Uh, you'll especially see this with the language in particular when uh, you'll notice that Switzerland has basically four, I guess, federal or nationally recognized languages. Uh, and I also want to note that for some reason a lot of Americans in particular seem to get Switzerland and Sweden mixed up. Uh, and I just want to say that Sweden and Switzerland are completely different things. Sweden is all the way up north in the Nordic region of Europe, and Switzerland is right dab in the middle of Western Europe, and again it borders Italy, France, Germany, Austria. So it's, it's definitely different from Sweden, and Switzerland is actually a lot smaller than Sweden um, when it comes to geography. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a major mix-up that some people have uh, gained over the years. But the interesting thing about this book is how it tries to show you the various aspects that make Switzerland different, make it distinct from a lot of European nations, and it kind of breaks it down for you in regards to their history. Uh, you'll notice that Although Switzerland has had a lot of civil wars over the years, it has tried to maintain neutrality uh, when it comes to fighting other people's wars. So um, the fact that they were able to sort of stay out of these kinds of wars uh, has allowed them to gain some wealth uh, compared to a lot of other European nations who focused on having uh, di tons of different wars and um, fighting constantly. And there's also a big aspect when it comes to uh, their politics and how it's, how it's almost like uh, American politics and is fairly similar to the American um governmental system, like you have cantons that are basically states, um, except a lot smaller than states, like we have in the United States, and they you have the canton governments, and then you have the local governments, and then you have the federal government, similar to what we have, um, although I will say they have more presidents than we do, however, these presidents don't maintain supreme authority, uh, and they are often switched around, so they don't hold the position that they have for a significant amount of time. However, I don't think they're appointed by the people, I think they're appointed by the parliament. But they do get kind of switched around, so you'll have a president of maybe the economy and a president of maybe agriculture or something, and then they'll they'll switch these kinds of roles around. Uh, and you'll sort of see how that's presented uh, a little in the book. There's also, uh, I think, an emphasis in regards to the Swiss economy and how it's sort of unique to a lot of other European nations. A lot of European nations have focused on trying to be united under one system, the EU, and you'll see how Switzerland has denied this um, this uh, idea of joining the EU, 
because they feel that their wealth should be based within the Swiss currency and you'll see how that's had an impact um, on them and has allowed them to have sustainability over the years uh, especially considering that the EU is having a lot of difficulties at least probably lately so uh, they do have this sense of being like Europe but ultimately um, creating their own sort of identity the interesting thing too is is that Switzerland is a, a nation of multiculturalism in particular different religions and different um, different groups uh, in particular it's divided based upon language like you have the Italian section you have the French section you have the German section you know you, you have all these different kinds of cultural elements within Switzerland and I think that's played a huge impact on the the acceptance of the people within that uh, collective group and uh, I think it only makes sense to sort of Swiss history uh, when you look at their stories and how they actually became a nation you'll notice that the book talks about how um, a lot of their earlier ideas were based on this concept of freedom and personal s sovereignty. So there is a lot of things within this book that sort of address what has made Switzerland what it is basically today. Uh, and I think it's a very interesting read. If you're interested in understanding uh, various European cultures, if you're interested in learning about Switzerland in particular, if you want to know a little bit about maybe more of Europe in general, I think Switzerland's the best place to start because it's actually a lot more distinct than I think a lot of the other European nations. I think a lot of the Euro uh, other European nations have been very centralized um, but Switzerland, again, you have these, these cantons and you have this, this confederation that has made Switzerland sort of um, uh, distinct. And there's also the fact that Switzerland um, not only does it not belong to the EU and refuses to belong to the EU, it's also very big on, um, you know, uh, personal rights. In particular, sort of the the concept of um, defense, uh, especially since that has played an impact in uh, their history, especially when you have all of these other sides sort of fighting against each other, and then you have Switzerland in the middle who just kind of says, "Okay, continue and go on your fighting, but if you if you come near me, you know I will defend myself." And I think that's really what Switzerland became as a nation. It became a sort of defensive nation. And that's why you will see that every boy is required to go to the army for an extended period of time. But again, the army is not necessarily actually going out in combat because, again, Switzerland doesn't really get involved in outside wars. It's just designed to be sort of a defense, um, a def def defense, uh, place or defense uh, defense oriented kind of uh, country in particular a defense oriented kind of government where they basically give um, give those that are in the army rifles and so they know how to use them in case you know Switzerland would have to go up against a, um, a foreigner who's trying to invade them so they have been designed to be on the defensive. They're never on the offensive when it comes to any kind of war or any other kinds of uh, warlike initiatives. I mean, they they for sure probably help in regards to foreign aid and foreign relief. Again, they do have the United Nations um, within Geneva, but they are designed to be a more defensive-like 
more isolated kind of nation. Um, probably similar, I think, to the United States because, again, we have a huge, huge chunk of land. And then, yeah, we do have some two countries that technically border us, but we do have this sort of isolation from all of the other countries and continents. So I think it only makes sense that we would develop this, this I think, similar cultural culture of defense and of, um, again, having the sort of the, the, the militia. Switzerland, I guess you could say, is somewhat similar in that sense, although I don't think it's granted to them as a right. But, again, it is emphasized that they are a defensive nation and it's uh, not designed to be a superpower. Um, but an area of sort of peace, tranquility, and and of um, and of isolation. I think this could be highlighted too within their geography too, because Switzerland has tons of mountains and tons of passageways that you need to go through in order to get to certain destinations, and their train system has really highlighted highlighted that, but. I think, though, that's really ultimately all I can say in regards to this book and what it sums up in a nutshell. Uh, it's really designed to give you a sense of why Switzerland is different, why Switzerland stands out from a lot of other European nations, what makes it culturally and, um, and economically and politically different. Uh, there are a lot of things that I think Switzerland has to offer, re uh, and not just from their, uh, not just from the side of traveling, but on the side of um, being a nation that we could maybe learn some things from. Uh, and I think if you are interested in politics, if you're interested in economics this book in particular will appeal to you because it is designed to give you a sense of what these things are like uh, within Switzerland and how they're sort of conducted within Switzerland. But I think that's really ultimately all I can say about this book. But if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But I think that's really all I can say. I hope you all have a nice day and thank you so much for watching. And I will be back tomorrow.